Hi there, and welcome to Music Theory 1 Honors. This is going to be an interesting course. I'm trying to teach this without being able to be with you the whole time, it's going to make it more complicated than it's been in the past, but it's still doable. What we're going to do is look at how music gets put together and the rules that we've developed based on physics over the years of what sounds good and why it sounds good and why we put that together. Now I'll tell you this right from the beginning. There's going to be some of you who go, I just can't stand this. I, you know, these rules, are the, I, I want to do these other things. Fine. Do the other things all you want to, just don't turn them in for an assignment. Turn the assignments in as given and feel free to use the stuff that you've got to play with to play and to examine and to push the envelope. Just don't turn it in for the assignment. If, if I ask you for a 1451 chord progression, I really want a 1451 chord progression. If you want to go and say, oh, I want to use a 2 and a 7 and a. do that. I'll even be happy to look at it and listen to it and tell you some things about it. But let's turn in the right ones first. It's because there is so much open to us in music when we start talking about music theory. We need to start at the beginning. I'm going to say this may be the hardest class you've ever taken. I know people who were into nuclear physics and rocket science who thought that music theory was a terribly difficult subject. I also know folks like my friend Jimmy Laughlin that it just all popped in his head and, and what he heard and what he could write down was all the same stuff and it was easy to him. Jimmy's a professor of jazz now with his doctorate in jazz education from the University of North Texas. My doctorate was in sacred music from the University of Memphis and the very first class that I got to teach as a full-time college professor with the title professor in front of my name was Music Theory 1. So I've been doing this since 1991 and I've gotten pretty good at it and I hope that I'll be able to communicate those ideas to you so that we'll all be able to be on the same page. Now you're going to be added to a music first group that'll be on your Canvas page and you'll be turning in your assignments on that and turning in some listings on that. So you'll be learning to write music and learning to listen to music and I'll be able to see exactly what you're doing and listen to it which is really cool. So, where do we start? We've got to start with being able to read music. There are several individual music lessons on reading music that you can go to and look at and enjoy as, as many times as you want to. But let me give you some of the simple stuff to begin with. There are two staffs that we're going to be using. The top staff will be the treble staff or the G clef staff. The bottom staff, which goes down at the bottom, will be the bass clef or the F clef staff. Now most of you have used the G clef before. It's the one you learned in elementary school. It had five lines. Look, we conveniently have five fingers. E, G, B, D, and F are the names of the lines. Every good boy does fine. Elvis's guitar broke down Friday. Works just fine. The spaces work out even better. F. A, C, E, and they spell out face. Did you notice we always start at the bottom and go up? So down in music and up in music are down and up on the page as well. So that will tell you that the bass clef is music below the treble clef. G, B, D, F, and A. Good boys do fine always. A, C, E, G. All cows eat grass, or if you're a city kid, all cars eat gas. With that, you're going to be able to notate music. You're going to be able to tell me where it is so that when you're telling me I want A, you're going to get this A and not this A, unless you really want that one. So we're going to start simply. For some of you, it's going to be painfully simple. If you've been in band and in choir and been reading music for a while, the first week or two are going to seem really, really simple. And then it's going to start getting harder. Now, music 
theory is just like math. Everything is based on something before. So if you miss something down here, you're not going to be able to do something here. Would you believe all the stuff I'm going to be talking about all semester long, I still have to know as a practicing musician. I've still got to be able to read the music. I've still got to be able to read the notation. I've still got to be able to read the rhythm patterns. I've still got to know what chord goes to what chord. None of it ever goes away for us. Now, it changes for us. At some point we go, okay, we're in what's called the common practice period. Now we're going to do some romantic things, and they do some added stuff. Oh, now we're going to get rid of all of that, we're going to do 12-tone music. Y'all don't have to worry about 12-tone music yet. Some of you may go on in music, and you'll end up having to study that. The idea is, by the end of the year, you'll have all of the information in your head to be able to write music and perform music and get somebody else to be able to perform it. So you'll know how to do it and how it works. Now this is really cool if you're going on to be a music major. If you're going to be a music major, they're going to make you take this class again because they're going to teach it exactly the way they're using it at their school. There's several different ways of teaching music theory. I use one. You may end up in a school that teaches that exact same way. You may end up in a school which teaches it completely differently. I use numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Some use solfege. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. It's a different way of doing the same thing. I'll talk about one chords and four chords and five chords. Some places we'll talk about tonic chords and subdominant chords and dominant chords. If you can probably tell, I like the easier names. So, let's have some fun. Let's learn some stuff together, and let's make some really cool music. One of the things I want to be able to do is I want to be able to take some of the music that you guys write and put it on the web for our parents to hear so they can see just what cool things Ball High students are capable of. Hope you're having a great day. Have a look around, and I'll be getting everybody up and running on Music First shortly. Have a wonderful rest of the day.